Let's look at how you can model a discrete time system. Uh, this material is in the textbook in section uh, 3.5, uh, and the section is titled Dis Discrete Time System Equations. We can model any discrete time system, or rather any linear time invariant discrete time system. using a linear constant coefficient difference equation. So just as uh, in the continuous time case we could model any linear time invariant continuous time system using a linear constant coefficient differential equation. Um, in the general uh, case, a difference equation would have this form, uh, where n is my sequence variable, and capital N here represents a maximum advance, and then we'll use a's with subscripts to represent the, the coefficients on the uh, output terms. So this would be an advance of capital N minus 1, plus a series of these down to A of capital N multiplied by Y of N. And then on the right-hand side of the equation, we have various uh, uh, coefficients that we'll use. Um, B to represent the uh, coefficients on um, the right-hand side, and these are multiplied by the input terms, um, which could have a different maximum advance, which we'll call M, plus all the way down to the, the current input X of N. Um, or using some no summation notation, we can write this more concisely as the sum from K equals 0 to N a k y of n plus n minus k is equal to the input terms sum from k equal 0 to capital M where, and then here we have the a coefficients I'm sorry the b coefficients which we write as B of N minus M uh, plus K times our input terms. Causality actually requires that um, M, capital M is less than uh, capital N, so the maximum advance on the uh, output side, which is N, um, has to be greater than the maximum advance on, on the input terms, which is capital M. Um, we'll generally assume in the notation, just to simplify things a little bit, um, assume that M is equal to N and then uh, we can handle M uh, less, less than N cases by just letting some of the, the B coefficients be uh, zero. So that allows us to simplify the notation a little bit more. The sum from K equals zero to N of A K Y of N plus N minus K and then a sum from k equals 0 now to n, since uh, m and n are equal, of bk um, x of n plus uh, n minus k. And again, some of the leading bk terms may actually be 0. This is known as the uh, advance 
form of the difference equation where uh, y of n and x of n represent the, the current output and input respectively and uh, y of n plus 1 then would be actually a future output or a future input. Um, we can also write this difference equation in, a, in what's known as the delay form uh, just with the change of variables where we let uh, m equal n plus n and then rewrite this uh, difference equation in terms of m. Uh, now our leading coefficient becomes y of m instead of y of n plus 1 and then we'll have a1 y of m minus 1 which is now uh, the previous output plus a capital N y of m minus capital N and then that's equal to b0 x of m plus b capital N x of m minus n and this is the delay form of the difference equation. Uh, you need to be able to go back and forth between the advanced form and the delay form. Um, it's a pretty, tri pretty trivial substitution. Both forms are useful. If you recall, when we looked at uh, um, finding the recursive or iterative solution, There, it's the delay form that's useful. And uh, given, uh, for a given input and given initial conditions, we can use the delay form to calculate the current output and then plug that uh, back in and, and calculate the next output. And then just do a, a sequence of uh, recursive uh, uh, calculations uh, calculate the output for any given input. Uh, of course, here we get uh, a numerical solution, um, a, a closed form solution to the difference equation is far more useful and in order to approach that uh, we'll start with some um, operational notation. This allows us to simplify the, the difference equation um, even further and um, just as we used a, a D when we were talking about uh, continuous time systems we'll use an E here to represent an advance operator so E of X of N actually would uh, represent X of N plus 1 um, uh, e times E or E squared would represent a double advance and that represents then uh, X of N plus 2. So notice now that I'm, I'm going to be using the advance form of uh, a, a, the difference equation. For a specific example, let's consider the case, the difference equation Y of N plus 2 plus one quarter one quarter y of n plus one plus one sixteenth y of n is equal to x of n plus two so this would be a, a second order uh, difference equation because that's my highest ad, uh, advance so this becomes, using this operator notation, uh, e squared plus one quarter e plus one sixteenth. Again, all operating on y of n. And then on the right hand side, because of the advance by two, we have e squared x of n. So 
in general, our um, difference equation would actually become, uh, we can write as a polynomial in, the, in terms of the advanced operator times y of n, and another polynomial we'll call p in, the, uh, in terms of the advanced operator operating on the input x of n, Uh, where q of e is, in terms of the co coefficients we've introduced previously, would be e to the capital N, our largest advance, plus a1 e to the n minus 1, plus a capital N, and similarly our, our P polynomial in E becomes B0 E to the N plus B1 E to the N minus 1 plus BN. Again, any of these coefficients uh, in, in a particular example um, may turn out to be 0. Uh, we'll find that the general solution to a difference equation consists of uh, zero input solution as well as a zero state solution just as we had for uh, continuous time systems. So now we'll turn our attention to, to finding um, uh, first the zero input solution uh, just as we did for continuous time systems and then we'll look at finding the zero state solution. Um, the, the portion of the output that depends on uh, the form of the input. The zero input solution depends only on the initial conditions. It uh, doesn't depend on the actual form of the input at all.